concentrate on pitching. Steve Carlton was on our show yesterday, f former Philly pitcher, and he stopped uh, talking to the press. You stopped talking to some members of the press, but he went eight years before he ever talked to anybody again. Would you ever consider doing that? Well, I think if uh, it got any further than it's gotten along this year, I don't think I have a problem doing it. I mean, Lefty did what he did, and he stuck to his guns, and everybody knew it. All right. So, I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to stop talking to him if they continued to treat us the way that we've been treated. Right, let's talk about your guns for a few seconds. Uh, they say that the fastball is down, for example, in a few mm -hmm. miles per hour. You know, an 87, 88, as opposed to a 90, 94. Would that make a big difference in your effectiveness, just being down somewhat in the, in, in the speed gun? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, so that, that assessment is true, do you think? Oh, I mean, there's definitely times I've gone to the mound when I haven't had a good fastball, but I don't think my fastball's gone, no. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gone out there and thrown, I've thrown some 85 mile hour fastballs this year, and when you're used to throwing 90 miles an hour and you're going out there flipping up 85 and you don't have a great breaking ball and a changeup to back it up, it's tough to get them off it. Mm -hmm. Now, walks is the other thing. That's been the murderous thing for you. Always has been right throughout your career, right? Well, yeah, throughout my career it's been. Uh, I think I'm the only one that doesn't worry about them. It doesn't bother me. Um, Walks no bother? Does it bother for Gosey? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it bothers for Gosey, it bothers Crook, it bothers all the rest of the players. They get yelled at from all three corners out there on the field. But <laughs> I never let them bother me. I figure it's a part of the game, and I'm going to make, I'm going to try and make pitches. If I don't make them, I walk them. Do you think, in general, that playing with the Phillies has helped you more in terms of the fact that they don't sugarcoat. You've got teammates like Kruk and Dalton and others who will say exactly what's on their mind. They don't hold it in. They don't resent whatever is going on with the teammates. Yeah, I think it's helped me a lot, especially this year because there got to a point where I was struggling and I let some of the stuff that was in the paper, they printed some stuff in the paper about my teammates not wanting me closing games for the team. Mm -hmm. Well, I let that kind of bother me and then Darren kind of took things by the horns and straightened everything out. What did he say? He just told me he thought I was being stupid. I was being a selfish player, and uh, that wasn't what it was all about. And we talked. We probably talked for an hour with a couple other teammates, and I expressed my views, and they expressed theirs, and since then it's been fine. After this series, this road series is over, you're going to go head-to-head -head with the Cardinals. I guess you'd all agree, you and your teammates who will be joining you today, the Cardinals are playing some good ball. Are you a better team than the St. Louis Cardinals? Yeah, I think we are. I think top to bottom we are a better club. Right now, we, have, we aren't playing as well as we can play. But uh, every team goes through what we're, we're going through right now. And uh, I think the biggest problem we've had is we've been watching them too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter what they do. As long as we go out and win the game we're playing, it doesn't matter. Right. And until we play them, it shouldn't matter what they do. The top of this season, for the first eight, nine weeks, you guys were on a pace to win 117 games. Mm -hmm. That wasn't going to stay that way. But what was the real Philly team? I mean, obviously, this slumping team, you don't believe, was, is the real team. But was it sort of a mix of the two? Uh, how good it, is it a 100-win team? What? I think the team is, this team is definitely capable of winning 100 games. It's just a matter of us getting back to what we did in the beginning, and that was go out. We intimidated people. We just beat people up. Right. It wasn't like we'd go out and dance around a little bit and then it'd be close. We went out and beat people up on, on the mound and at the plate. Mitch, I'm not going to harp on this too much, and if you don't want to talk about it, I'll be very respectful of that, but there are people, there are things behind ma the makeup of people that, you know, allow them to perform or not perform, whatever the situation might be. You're going through some tough times with your parents. They both, I'm told, have cancer, and you're going through you, difficulties in a marriage, a marital, uh, I guess, divorce, actually. Mm -hmm. How much has that entered into your on the mound makeup well last year uh i let it bother me a lot because my mom got diagnosed with cancer last year i was going through a divorce and i just didn't put all of it out of my head i took it on the field with me and as far as this year went my dad was diagnosed with kidney cancer in uh i think it was may mm -hmm. and they operated removed the kidney and he's fine right so i i don't think i've let that affect me at all this year i've gone out and tried to just stay on my game and concentrate on the hitter. Mm. Mitch Williams, been effective in stretches, and at one point, as we said, 23 of 27 saves converted. But it did blow six save opportunities fairly recently, but he's back on track again, trying to keep a good positive attitude, just like uh, his teammates, Kurt Schilling. Tommy Green will also be joining us in just a few moments, but Mitch, thanks a lot. Thanks for setting the record straight. Thank you. Okay, we'll come back. Tommy Green joins us from the Phillies also after this.
Travel ranged through Continental. One airline can make a difference. Business first. The comfort and service of international first class at a business class fare. That's the difference. He doesn't like power breakfast. He'll take a pass on poetry. Deep down, he's a grown-up boy scout. Way grown. He likes feeling clean and cool and very male. And he knows how to get there. Where have you guys been? Brute. Men are... Ira Tommy Green came to the Philadelphia Phillies via the Dale Murphy trade. He is from Whiteville, North Carolina, right outside of Wilmington, North Carolina. They nicknamed him Jethro. He's no hillbilly. He knows the story, but we'll talk to him about that. <laughs> Welcome. Good to see you. Ira. No one calls you Ira, or very few people call you Ira, right? That's my, uh, yeah, that's, that's about the way it goes. Uh, they either call me Jethro or uh, Greeny or something like that, but I got that from my dad. I'm a junior, so... Uh, I've uh, said a few choice words to him over my lifetime. Why'd you name me this? But, yeah, I'm just playing. playing There's very playing few him. pitchers I can recall named Ira. Now pitching Ira Green. It just, just doesn't... Sounds like a lawyer, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't really see myself does. being a lawyer. It really does. Population 5,500 in Whitefield, North Carolina. What kind of advantages do you have being a country boy? Uh, well, uh, there's a lot of... There's not really any advantages because... Uh, you get, uh, as far as like going uh, out of high school into baseball, you get thrown into an environment that uh, you're not used to. You play cow pasture baseball, though, right? Yeah, cow I mean, uh, well, I've, I've done that, yes. And uh, there's been a lot of ballparks that haven't had any fences I've played in. And <laughs> don't it, cut the grass. And it, is it a true story that the first game you ever saw in person was the first game you were brought up to pitch in? That you, I mean, I'm talking talk about a major league game. Uh, I saw one, and it was like it was a... Well, I really just saw the fireworks at the end. It was in Atlanta back when I was. I mean, literally 12. the fireworks. Yeah, not the game? yeah. I mean, I, we got in uh, in into the ballpark and and uh, I, I saw Necro pitch. All I can remember, I, was, I can't remember a lot of it, but I saw Necro and uh, pitch, and they had a fireworks show, and some guy got caught on the field. They were trying to embarrass him after the game, and. You know, <laughs> that's so all that I was your big introduction was, to the game of yeah, baseball. Yeah, I mean, but all I cared about was playing. And yeah. uh, that's all I did when I was young until I you know, got a chance to play professional. Now, in Whitefield, there are no bars, right? No malls. Uh, as far as I know of, there's no bar. There might be. No, I haven't been back there in a while. But uh, when I grew up, there were no bars. What do you do for a drink in Whitefield? You know, go to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's, where, that's where I grew up a lot. But, uh, uh, I mean, it's close, and it's a great, you know, I think it's a great part of the country, that area. Oh, it's, it's got to be beautiful. Uh, you got all the golf you want and all the beaches you want and speaking all the of, sun you want. Speaking so. of famous golfers, Michael Jordan, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you watched him play high school basketball. I saw him come in. I think he was a, a sophomore in high school, so that, that puts me a little younger, but I saw him play at my high school gym. And uh, Did you say, there's the man? You could tell he was going to be something special. I mean, he was, well, I think he, like I said, he was around 6'2 then, maybe, 6'1", 6'2", mm -hmm. and, and you could just, just telling his actions, just what he did and the way he jumped, and you know, he was gonna be a great. I mean, just he was a great athlete. People don't remember that this guy pitched a no hitter, Tommy Green. People don't recall that, but those were up back in the Braves days. We have some footage of you in action. When we think of uh, Tommy Green, people of late have said, Well, here's another guy with another dead arm, etc. etc. There's a nice play here, by the way. What about it? We've talked about this all show. You guys fried pitch, pitching right now, you're pitching over pitched right now. No, I don't think so. Personally, uh, uh, for, for me, uh, beginning of the season, uh, what I worked for after the injuries and stuff last year is prepare myself to come in and, and go as long as I can, as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. And uh, and when that happens, you know, I'm going out, out there at the beginning of the season, I'm giving 100%. And so it happened, I had a chance to finish a lot of ball games early. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went through this uh, this part of uh, the season right now where uh, I felt I felt better 
uh, before, but you, know, you go out there and have times where you feel a little dead mm -hmm. and stuff, and just there's times you have to pitch through. Every pitcher goes through it, or sometimes you're not going to feel better than others, but you can't let that affect you mentally. By and the that's, way. The, that's the biggest thing about it. You've got to go out there and make your pitches and, 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 and say, I'm going to throw this ball right here. You hit it. Mm -hmm. You hit it, and it mm -hmm. caps off to you. Yeah. Well, someone in your family hates the beard, by the way. Uh, Was he a Grammy? Uh, everybody does, but uh, <laughs> they've got to hang with them back there. That's right. <laughs> you got to get back home. The story goes that when the folks want to listen to a Phillies game, they've got to get into a Mustang convertible right there in Whiteville, turn it on, try to find Harry Callis somewhere when Tommy Green is pitching, so they have to literally listen to the radio in the car to listen to him pitch. <laughs> Two more important points before we go. You want to get a college degree, go back to school. That's important to you. That's something you're going to do, right? Yes, uh, uh, really, I really do because uh, uh, my biggest thing to me when I was in high school was uh, to be, well, uh, be a good enough ath athlete to be able to get a college scholarship so my dad would not have to put the family in that type of jeopardy. And you'll never forget the fact that you also once cropped $25 a day tobacco. Mm -hmm. You know what it is to really work, so this is a great life, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is. I had a rough time with it. I didn't crop a lot of it, but I did enough to make me value some good old air conditioning and being <laughs> indoors sometimes. That's for sure. So. Well, these days, he enjoys and appreciates what it is to be. I'm embattled, all of the Phillies pitchers are right now, but they're going to come out of it. Thank you, Tommy, for joining us. <laughs> we'll come back wrap things up up close after this. You know, there should be a whole lot of road between you and your next set of tires. Uniroyal Tiger Paw Radials, sure-footed, mile after mile. If you're looking for tires that will last for miles and miles, we've got your number. Uniroyal Tiger Paw Radials, sure-footed, mile after mile. You are here. He has the traveler's checks here. Nah, that's no good. But this is American Express Checks for Two. The only traveler's checks that either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. The Grand Prix of Germany, live on ESPN. Alain Prost has torn up the circuit with six victories this season. Now it's off to the unpredictable course of the Grand Prix of Germany. Sunday morning, live on ESPN. Tomorrow, it's the perfect night for the perfect game at the Rocky Mountain Senior Open. Then the high-powered punches of heavyweights Jesse Ferguson and Rocky Papelli ignite top right boxing. Knockdown Thursday, ESPN. Hey! We thank Schilling, Williams, and Green for joining us up close tomorrow. George, Will, and Thomas Boswell on Is Baseball America's Past Time? That's tomorrow up close. We'll see you then.